Hello, and thank you for joining us today for our series. I am Barb Haggerty from the SRI and ETTC at Stockton University, and I am joined here today with two of our trainers, Bill and Michelle. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at screen recording and different ways to utilize screen recording in your classroom. Today's agenda. We're gonna have some reflection activities for you to look at and to complete things to think about as you're working through this session. With screen recording, we're gonna talk about the purpose of it, some uses for it, as well as tips to make it helpful for you. We're gonna provide recommended resources to create your own recorded lessons. What we'll be sharing with you today is Screencastify, Screencast-O-Matic, and Loom. I want you to take a moment. Have you used video, whether it was your own content, YouTube, or another program? Did you use that with your students? How was it received by your students? And what are your concerns regarding screen recording and the concept of flipped learning going into next school year? We may not be able to answer these questions directly for you, but this is a great time to reflect on your concerns, look at the content of this session, and you can always reach out to us if you have additional questions. Let's talk about some benefits of screen recording. So you can create a resource that can be used multiple times and with various classes. So if you're a teacher that teaches more than one section of a particular content area for a particular course, if you take the time to create the video now, you'll be able to use that with all of those different groups of students in the upcoming year. And if it's something that you use from one year to the next, you'll be able to reuse that video as well. And remember, you can always make recordings of your instructions for your students. It doesn't have to be just the content itself. Students are able to review and replay as needed to increase their own understanding. And we can also use screen recording for the students to demonstrate their knowledge. Let's take a look at some screen recording tips. Keep your content in smaller chunks. You can always provide multiple segments to your students. We do recommend keeping the video length to approximately one minute for every year of the age of the student. So if you are in middle school and teaching middle school courses, you'd probably wanna stay around that 10 to 12 minute range. Again, remember you can create multiple videos to deliver the content that you would normally do during a full class period, but it's just segmenting the videos so that you can focus on one particular area. We also recommend that you test your audio before starting to record and preview it before you post it to use with staff or students. So sometimes everything's set up, everything looks like it's running normally, but then maybe something happens and the audio is not loud enough or there's other noises in the background. So we recommend that you test that before you share it. Select a quiet of a place as possible so that you're eliminating noises that could distract your viewers. So if you are working remotely and you're working from home, try to select a space maybe where if you have dogs, they're not included in the recording. Um, or if you're in a, a building where you're sharing spaces, move to a space where not so many people are around. This will just help make the information more clear for your listeners and your viewers. Have a plan before you start recording. It is entirely up to you if you have a full outline or a full script. Some people work better with just having a basic outline and describing the information and expanding on it as they feel that it needs to be addressed in that moment. Or you could be more comfortable having a script and reading from a script. Whichever is more comfortable to you is what we recommend that you try. So when you have access to this video, you're also gonna get access to this slideshow, which will have this link to an article um, or a video that will give you nine screen recording tips to make you a better creator. Let's talk about some uses for screen recording. You could record a welcome message for your students. Now, whether you're in an environment where you see all of your students 
all of the time, or if you see some of them part of the time, or if everyone's online, you can record a welcome message and share it. You could also do this for your parents. Post a welcome message on the website for your students' parents. You could also send this out in a newsletter or other form of communication that you use with your community. You could record instructions for an assignment or a project. Sometimes when we just read the instructions, other questions come up and it may not be very clear. So if you record your instructions, you're able to provide more information within that brief video than what may be contained on a typed document of instructions. You could record your lesson. You could record a video to provide feedback to your students. And again, you can have the screen recording used for students to demonstrate their knowledge. And remember, this is taking it to that higher order thinking and that next level for your students to really show what they know. I want you to take a moment. How do you anticipate using screen recording for the upcoming school year? In what way do you feel it'd be most helpful? There's no right or wrong answer to this. This is gonna vary based on the students that you have, the age of your students, and the content that you're delivering. Also, what may have worked for one group of students this past school year may not work the same way you want it to with your students in the upcoming school year. So they're just things to keep in mind, but take a moment, make some notes, and then resume this video when you're ready. Let's recap. Screen recording is going to provide increased access to class resources. Your students are gonna be able to review this when they need to and regardless of where they are, as long as they have access to where you posted it. Your resources can be used multiple times and with various classes. You can provide instructions or content through the video. If you have the opportunity and you have a grade level partner, you could each share the responsibility of creating some of these videos and use, work with each other's resources. Students can review the resources as needed to increase their understanding. This is a great way for students to also reinforce and to review so that if they have questions, even if they were with you live and asked you questions about the content, if they have a video to go back to, this is a great way for them to understand. Different online resources can be used by students to demonstrate their knowledge. So there's some different tools and we'll talk about a couple of them with this session where students can record themselves. And the one thing I wanna remind everyone is that if you have a tablet, a laptop or a Chromebook with a camera enabled or a smartphone, you can create a video. So we're gonna be sharing a couple different tools today, but you can always use something, just a camera, and hit record and share that video. You can also differentiate for students. So if you create a small library of videos, you can provide videos for specific needs. And again, all of these resources can be used whether you're face-to-face -face with your students in a blended hybrid model or a completely virtual environment. Let's look at some of these screen recording tools that are available. Some common features, um, what we're gonna be looking at today, you're gonna to be able to choose between a recording the whole desktop, a window or a tab. All of the tools typically ask that you grant access to a mic or a camera. They're going to record your mouse movements and they're gonna give you a way to share the information. Each of them are a little bit different and we will review that with each tool. So now I'm gonna turn it over to Michelle so that she can start to show you Screencastify and Screencast-O-Matic. Okay, everyone okay. can see my screen. I'm just sharing um, the, yes. what I'm sharing is the, uh, the slideshow title page. And the first one, which we're going to talk about is uh, Screencastify, which is a screen video recorder that I've been using with um, you know, myself 
and with, and my students have also been uh, recording them for a couple of years now. It is a free tool that you can get from the Chrome Web Store. So if I just took you to the Chrome Web Store, I didn't even spell it right, doesn't matter. <laughs> you can see that if you search the store right up here for extensions, if you type in Screencastify, you will, it'll show up, it'll be the top, the top choice. And you will have a blue box that says add it to Chrome. I've already got this added to Chrome, um, but once you click on that add to Chrome, it might ask you for permissions. You will have to grant it permissions. And then it will live up here in the toolbar next to your address bar. So you can see my tool is right here, Screencastify. So the icon looks very similar to that. It's just reversed. And if I were to be screen recording a slideshow that I was showing my students, what I could do is I could just enable this little tool just by clicking on it. And it's gonna give me some choices. Um, it does have a five limit, a five minute limit per video for free. And I believe I can record 50 per month for free. Yes. So the first thing I have to do is I need to um, decide whether or not I want that webcam enabled or not. And the webcam is a great feature, um, but you know, depending on the age of your students, they might find it creepy to find their teacher's head at the corner. So if if there's no value to putting your own face in the video, you can um, you can turn off the embed webcam option. But you know, with some of the littles, they really need that connection and need to um, need to see their teacher's face. So you can turn that on and off. And you also want to check that the level of your microphone is correct. So here, you're just going to make a couple of little choices. Um, the very first time you do install this tool, it's going to ask for permission to be able to use your camera and your webcam when you select those things. So um, since I can't replicate that right now, just know it'll just pop up over here and you will have to give it access. You have the opportunity here to just record your browser tab, which this is the browser tab. It would only record this particular tab. Um, the entire desktop or just the webcam. So if you just wanna talk to your student for that morning message that Barbara was referring to, you could just do a webcam only. I'm not gonna embed my webcam in mine. I'm gonna go with the browser tab. No, actually I'm gonna pick desktop and I'm going to select record. So now it's going to prompt me. It's gonna say, hey, are you sure you wanna share your entire screen or do you just want the application window. I'm gonna choose my entire screen right now and I'm going to select share and you will see at the bottom of my screen, you're gonna see, I'm just moving my zoom controls around. You're gonna see some controls down here. Okay, and you'll notice that there's something that looks suspiciously like a uh, pencil. Okay, and when I click on when I click on the mouse, I've got some choice for my mouse pointer. I can hide the cursor when it's not moved, or I can show the cursor with a nice little highlight. So I've got some choices when I'm making decisions here. There's a pen, which is which allows me to uh, change my color and annotate on top of the screen, or I can erase that. So um, if you do have uh, a PDF up or um, a blank slide or uh, something like that, you do have some very rudimentary whiteboard options here. So you do have the choices for your mouse pointer. You've got the choices for your pen and the eraser. And you've also got that embed webcam option. And you'll notice it's been recording me this entire time and recording all of my mouse movements, things like that. And I can pause if I have to think about what it is that I <laughs> am going to say, and then I can resume recording just like this. I just hit resume and it is recording again. I can pause again 
as many times as I need to in that five minutes. And when I'm done, I'm just going to select end recording. So here I'm gonna select the end of the recording and you will see it's gonna open up a new tab. The very first time it does this, you might get a screen of gibberish. Um, not being able to replicate that experience, just be prepared that you might see like a screen with some code on it. Don't worry about it. Um, so we always do say test out things before you um, before you uh, record a real one. So just in case you do get that that first timers uh, page of code. Now I do want to show you what we're looking at here. What it did was it gave us, it started playing my video right now and you can't hear it because I've got the sound off, but it starts to play your video back for you right away. And you'll see that just like being in an untitled Google doc, it's giving you an untitled thing. So here, I'm just gonna call this one demo screencastify, demo screencastify. And um, that is what the title of this is actually going to be called. And if I was not happy with it at this moment, I could throw it in the trash, but I do have some other options besides just throwing it away. You'll notice that there's an open in editor and that is a premium feature. It is not part of the shared screencastify. So I personally don't use this editor um, because I'm not going to pay for anything. I have the ability right here to share this screen recording um, right to classroom, publish it to YouTube, get an embed code. There are some other options. Send it in an email, generate a QR code, share it to a Wakelet. I can download it. Um, this is tied into my Google Drive. So this is already going to my Google Drive, which is wonderful. But you know, if I, if I share it to classroom, it works like any other third party tool where if I click share to classroom, it's gonna open up my classroom, make me select a class and you know, an action, whether I'm making an announcement or creating an assignment. So it does have that third party integration, which I absolutely love. For the publish to YouTube option, we have encountered a little bit of trouble. Um, it might get to like 99% and then not actually, uh, not actually get all the way up there. Please make sure that you are logged into your YouTube account if you're gonna publish it right to YouTube. The embed code lets you pop it right into a website. And one of the wonderful features with this, this tool is that you can trim from either side. So I did show you that um, the editor was, you know, one of the paid features, but you can trim your video and you just click on the scissors and then you start dragging out your little scissors and it will allow you to trim that. I'm just gonna pull that back and show you that, you know, it also works from the other side. So if you had any, anything at the beginning or the end where you were just thinking and not recording yet, or uh, maybe you thought it went a little too long, you do have the option to trim. So you've got all of those features um, available to you. And then you actually have to, let me just get these zoom controls out of the way. Then you have to save the trim. So I'm just gonna show you. And it's gonna ask you, it's gonna give you a little prompt. Trimming a video replaces the original video and all trim footage will be permanently deleted. So do you wanna make, you know, make that distinction? I'm just gonna cancel that trim and cancel out of it. But it's super, super easy. I can just copy the shareable link and paste it anywhere. Um, this is, once you click on that copy, that shareable link, it is accessible to anyone. Um, so be aware that it, it will take it out of your drive and make it public. Uh, if you wanna keep it private and um, protect your uh, intellectual property um, until you decide how you wanna share it to the world, make sure that you share it in like a private space um, or have it unlisted. There are definitely some more options here when you're copying that shareable link to make it private, public, or unlisted, just like you would do with a YouTube video. But this, you'll see, went right into my drive. So the very first time you install this, you want to connect it to your drive. And it's going to make a Screencastify folder in your drive. Also, from the top up here, when you right-click on the Screencastify icon, 
you can actually um, see that there are some different options here. So um, there, let me see, it's not showing. Let me get on a different screen. Here, let me, now let me click on it. When I click on this, you can see those options to record. You'll also see that there's a little icon for all of your recordings. So it will show you all of the Screencastify recordings that you've got. And of course, these all live in your Google Drive, but it does give you a nice little shortcut to them. So this is fantastic. You know, just that quick little click and, and I've got what I need. So very happy with this tool. Again, we have this installed on our students' Chromebooks so that they can record screencasts for us. We use those for performance-based assessments when they're completing something that we wanna be able to actually watch them do it. So it's, it's been a wonderful tool for us. So the next tool we're gonna show is Screencast-O-Matic and I'm logged into this with my Google credentials, which is a great feature. And um, the, it's very simple. It works pretty much just like Screencastify, except it doesn't have those same integrations that, we, that I showed you for Screencastify. So I'm just gonna click on um, start recording for free. And you'll notice some of those common features are going to uh, show up. I'm going to launch the free recorder right here. And it's going to prompt me to give it permission. So I'm going to do that really quick. This will take a minute. You have to wait. So everybody take a deep breath. <laughs> and just so you know, Screencast-O-Matic allows up to 15 minutes with the free videos as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. So it's, it does take a minute. You're watching this happen. You used to have to download something in order to use this, but now, you know, with this one, if you get this error, not a big deal. I've been getting this error and it doesn't seem to mean anything. Um, so I'm just going to click on OK. It has not gotten in the way of me actually being able to record. And you'll notice that I can drag my recording area around to record just what I want to get uh, recorded. And you'll notice that in that little settings wheel that popped up, that I can record the screen, the webcam, or both, just like the other tool. And I'm looking at my sound, and I'm making sure that my mic is not like up here in the red. Um, whether or not I want to bring in any computer audio, that is something that you can turn on and off. Um, this will... Um, the free recorder only captures narration, but with the pro account, you can, you can do some um, computer audio as well. I'm just gonna choose the screen. And you can see that the max time is 15 minutes. So I'm gonna just hit record. It's gonna give me a countdown, just like the other tool. And now it's going to um, capture my moves and anything I'm doing on the screen. So, if I were to switch tabs now, okay, let me get my controls out of the way. If I went back to that, um, back to that screen, if I were to switch tabs, I could do that. And now we do have this pause and then continue where I left off. Gives me another countdown, which is great. And then I'm going to just stop now. So when you are stopped, you actually have to hit done. Okay. And then the, the what's next pops up. Do I, do I want to save or upload it? Do I want to do a quick share or do I want to edit the video, which is of course in those pro tools. So if I wanted to save it, I click on save. You'll notice that I do have a little bit of trim options just like the other tool, trim for the front or the back, okay? And that is what is available to me. And um, so now I, my options are if I'm gonna save it as a video file or I'm gonna upload it to Screencast-O-Matic or upload it to YouTube. So I'm just gonna save this as a video file. I'm going to you know, give it a name. I can change this file name right here. And um, right now you'll notice I've got the highlight cursor option on, and then I can click publish. Okay, so it wants to know what file 
right? I didn't tell it what file. So you do have to um, like choose where you want it to go. I'm just gonna choose downloads right there. And it's going, and then when I hit publish, it will, it will download that file. So that's how simple it is. So making sure that you are um, actually recording your entire desktop, if you're gonna be switching between a number of tabs, I have to say that is a very important thing to do, like making the right selection out of the gate. So now I can either play the video or look at the folder it's in or copy that file path. All right. Thank you, Michelle. Uh, so Phil is going to show Loom, uh, so we can give you a brief preview of that. Okay. So I'm going to share my screen now. Okay. So uh, let me uh, explain. Loom, I would say, is the most robust of all of these, and uh, they give you a lot for free. And I think the reason they can give you a lot for free is because the um, the premium versions offer so much more. So I actually was introduced to Loom as soon as the quarantine hit because it is something that Stockton suggested for, for us to use to, to be able to create screencasts for, for students. So um, when it came time to having to share, when it came time to have to share uh, screencasting options with with teachers, this is the one I chose uh, that I wanted to, to try out. Although I've used all of these and they all have, you know, pros and cons. So I wanna actually show you what it looks like to go to Loom for the first time uh, because uh, it does something a little bit different than these other ones. And it, uh, one of the options is it will actually uh, install the Chrome extension for you when you sign in to the program. So I wanna show you what that looks like. So I'm running out of Google accounts that um, have that I have not logged into Zoom in, but I do have a couple left. So I actually have one down here. And to get to, to Loom, you just go to loom.com. That's, that's where it's available. And you do have two options. There's a desktop option. So if you're using a Mac or a PC and you would like to use the desktop option, you can. However, using it from the cloud through the browser uh, which is primarily how I'm going to be showing it, is extremely easy and uh, it takes a lot of the guesswork out of it. One of the advantages I did see to using the desktop version is that it does highlight your mouse as you're moving your mouse around the screen. So that that is uh, the one advantage I did see from the desktop version. Loom does not give a time limit in the free version. Okay, but we've given you time limits <laughs> because we think it's a good idea not to make your videos too long for instructional purposes. But uh, Loom, Loom does not do that. Okay, so I'm in an account where this is my first time. I have not been into Loom before in this Google account. So I'm going to, I have two options. When you get to the homepage, you see them. And uh, I'm going to click the one up here on top. They both do the same thing. And of course, they give you the option to sign up with Google, which is great and I will do so. And I'm gonna choose the account. And of course, it's gonna want me to agree to my terms. Okay, and that's all really good. Now, they'll ask you a few questions when you first, so I'll do this as if I'm a, a teacher. So I'll do as a teacher. And here I get, here's where I get the choice to install the app on my computer. So if you do wanna, take that route, uh, you know, uh, to put it on your PC or your Mac, you can, or uh, you can install the extension. Now, I'm going to pick install extension because I already have this on the computer that I'm using. So I'm going to click install and stack extension. And what you'll see is when I finish the process, you'll see a little icon up here from my Loom icon up here on top of my Chrome browser. So it will put this in. Now, if you are working in a district, some districts uh, restrict uh, teachers and students from adding their own extensions. Doesn't mean you can't do it. Just means that sometimes they restrict you. And usually in that situation, when a, um, a system administrator restricts the staff from doing it, what they do is provide the option for you to tell them that you want this extension in your browser and they can blast it out to you via the um, the administrative uh, tools that uh, come with Google. Just wanted to let you know that in case you're trying to install it and it's not working for you. 
Okay, so I'm going to click install extension. And uh, what it really does, all it really does is takes me to the Chrome Web Store, uh, which is just a link to where you would get the extension if you just went there directly. And then I just click add to Chrome. And I'll click add extension. And sure enough, it puts it right up on top in my browser. So it's that simple. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use one, uh, an account that I've already been using. Uh, so I just wanted to show you what the, the initiation process was for that. So it's really quite simple. When you, once you're in Loom, you can go to a section, my videos, it takes you to, where it will show you uh, your, you know, everything you've done. And most of these are just little things I've been doing just to try some things out. And I had a little fun with a thumbnail here. I was able to put a rhinoceros there for a thumbnail. Uh, you can do that. A thumbnail being the first slide or the first frame somebody would see of your video, which is really nice if you want to have like kind of a branded look for your class or something like that. You can make a, an image and put it in. I'll show you where you can do that. So you're going to start seeing this is the third one we've looked at. So this is going to get a little bit like Groundhog Day because they all, they all kind of work the same way. So I'm going to go to new video just to start one. And this almost looks exactly <laughs> like the Screencastify options. And some of the options are a little different, but it almost looks the same. So here are my options. Uh, just like in the others, I can do a screen cam, screen plus cam. So screen cut plus cam, you'll see on the bottom right corner, uh, you can put your image down there. And uh, so you get both simultaneously. That looks good. I'm not the guy. I don't really like to have me in the videos when I do them. Uh, that's just my own preference. I just don't like that. So I usually um, opt for screen only, okay, which is the second option. And uh, you can also do cam only, which again was an, is another option that we saw in some of the previous ones. I'm going to go back to screen only and show you some other options we have with that. Okay, now I also have the option of recording my full desktop or just the current tab, the current tab, meaning the tab that I'm in. So if I'm uh, here in this, uh, in this presentation, let me um, initiate that one more time. So let me show you. So let's say, let's create a scenario where I want to actually narrate this slide or narrate a set of slides. And screencasting is great for that. It doesn't always have to be demoing a, um, a, a computer technique or anything like that. So here I've got my, my loom, um, icon at the top and it's going to open it up. I get the same window. So again, now I have a choice of full desktop or a uh, tab. I'm going to tell you the truth and I'm going to tell you what I would normally do. I would normally do full desktop and uh, I would normally just present, put my slideshow into pre present mode to get a nice full screen. But for this purpose, I can show you more if I choose the tab because you'll get to see the tools and things like that more. So I am going to choose the tab. I'm going to do screen only. You can check your microphone. Okay, so here's my mic. And if you have multiple microphone sources, for instance, if you've, if you've plugged in maybe a headset or in my, my case, a remote mic, uh, something like that, uh, you get to pick which one you're using. Okay, so I'm going to be using this one. And uh, I like this option too. This is a good one. If you are opting for not showing your the video of yourself in the corner of your screencast, you can you can choose for it to show the video, uh, to show a picture. Now the picture is going to be one that that matches the Google account that you were in, or uh, it does give an option for you to to um, upload your own photo from this window down here. I could I can browse my computer, and if I have a picture of myself, I would rather put up. I could do that. I'm going to opt out of that, but that is kind of nice because if you don't want to um, have a video of yourself exp while you're uh, doing your screen, recording your screencast, just a picture of yourself can be nice just because it lets people know who's uh, doing the talking. So I'm going to shut that off and um, I'm going to leave the control menu on because that gives me this stuff down here which is pretty much the same menu we saw in the, in the other ones we were looking at. And um, I also, I, it's always, I always think, I can't see why you would not want the recording countdown. 
It's a little countdown that tells you when it's about to go into record mode. And that helps you a lot because uh, oftentimes uh, it can help you eliminate some of the stuff you may need to trim after you've done your recording. So I'm going to hit start recording. And the only other thing I could show you is you do get notifications. Like if people have watched your video and things like that, you can get some notification. It doesn't tell you who watched it, just gives you notifications that they have. So I'm going to, I'm going to start my recording and I'll do a very short recording uh, as if I'm narrating this slide. Okay. So um, I'll start my recording and here I get to pick uh, which two I want and I'm going to do screen two and I'm going to hit share, and it's giving me my countdown, and now I'm recording. So uh, if I were narrating this, I could be talking about Loom. I could be telling you that I have my link to the website. I also have a link to the tutorial, and then um, these are the various different features of Loom, and this is how it works. Like the others, I have my pause ab ability, and I can completely X out of the recording. What that does is that cancels the recording. Now, cancel recording means I've started to record this and it was just an absolute disaster and I just want to start over again. So what that'll do is just pretend that that thing never existed. So don't confuse that with this check mark, which is where you want to finish your recording. And that would be the one that you're going to keep and actually use. So I, I'm going to do that. I think we've recorded enough. And I'll click that. And then it immediately takes you over to uh, Loom's interface, which looks very nice and uh, gives us lots of little uh, options. And I want to show you what those are. Okay, so the first thing you can do is you can change the name of your recording right here. Okay, so uh, I'll put it Loom uh, Recording, something like that. And uh, so, so that's the first thing I can do. I can also manage where I go. I could immediately just download this if I want. So if I were uh, the type of person who was using maybe a, um, um, a third party desktop editor and I just wanted to use this for capture, do my editing and something else, I could do that at this point, but I'm gonna take advantage of what I can do actually right up here on the Loom website. I can uh, copy the link, I can duplicate this video and I can just trash it if I don't want it. Now, over here on the right, I have some other options. Let's take a look at the other options. Now, I do have a couple options that are not available in the free version because Stockton has bought into a, a, a um, semi-premium version. Uh, but the uh, one of the options I have is really cool. I do want to show it to you. And if it is something that you would really like to enable for your own work, it's a $5 a month uh, subscription uh, for it. So I'll show you what that is. But the first things I'm going to show you are not premium features. So if I go to my settings, I can uh, do these various things. Now, let me explain very quickly what some of these things are. You can open up comments to your video. So when, when, when people go to see your video, you can give them, you, they give you a spot where people can make comments. Now, that might not be what you want. Okay. So if you don't want it, you can shut it off. And if you do leave it on, the other option is when you get a comment, do you want a notification that you've gotten a comment on your video? So that can be turned on or off. So maybe you just want comments, but you don't want to be notified every time somebody comments for you. Okay. Uh, you can uh, uh, enable emoji reactions that you may have fun with those, particularly with some students, because these would be the reactions they can do various different little things uh, based on some things that as people watch their video, it's sort of a, an extension of comments, except it just gives you uh, emojis. Okay. Um, you want to um, an animated thumbnail GIF. I haven't explored that option too much. Uh, and I just kind of leave the rest of these um, pretty much the way they are, except for this one. You can make it so it can't be downloaded. Okay, and by the way, this is also the only one I know of where you can actually, well, no, I don't, I can't say this is the only one, but um, you can also make these private or just set a password for them when they're stored, which is an, also a nice thing. So I'm leaving everything open just because it makes everything easier for me as I'm showing it, but I just wanna let you know that that's there. And uh, show analytics to viewer, that's if you wanna analyze how many people have been seeing your video. It will start to give you stats, It'll get, give you stats when people drop out of your video, things like that. Uh, YouTube does a similar thing 
for you when you create those things. So this is all uh, of the, the uh, that's all of the settings. What I want to do is uh, it does give me a, a little bit of um, editing options and it gives me one option that I did not see in the others. Okay. So if I go to trim, okay, we all know what trim does, right? It's uh, it, it allowed us to, to get rid of what we didn't want at the beginning and possibly trim out what we need at the end. Most videos that we record always have a little stuff at the beginning and a little stuff when we're trying to end the video that need to be deleted. So if I want to do that in here, I'll hit start trimming. And so if I wanted to trim off, it just gives you these little red flags and everything that's red. When you go to remove down here on the bottom right corner of the video interface, it will delete that section. So here's where mine's better. Okay. I can delete from the middle of my video. So what does that tell me? It tells me I can do my favorite method of recording. It means that I can record and if I make a mistake while I'm recording, I can wait a couple seconds and redo that part of the video. And then when I get to this spot, wherever that mistake was, I can just select that area and I can hit remove. Now I'm not going to do that because when I remove, it takes a little, it, it takes a little time to process it. And I don't want you to have to wait for that time. So uh, I'm going to cancel that, but I just want to show you that that's available and I'm going to return to my video. I just want to show you one more thing about sharing. And um, if you go up here to the right corner, the link to your video is available. So it is hosted at Loom. Okay. They, they, it is hosted there and you can uh, change your privacy settings. Okay. So I could do link sharing or I could make it public. Link sharing would be the equivalent of anybody with the link can get there. I can do this too though, okay? I can add a password, okay? So if you only want people from your class to be able to, to get in here, you can add a password. So my password is gonna be P, well, let me make sure I get it right, P-W-O-R-D, short for password, probably the worst password I could choose. But for, for demo purposes, not a big deal. P-W-O-R-D. This is great. I'm going to save it. And um, now take a few minutes and try out Loom for yourself. Let's take a moment. Now that you have seen Screencastify, Screencast-O-Matic, and Loom, I want you to think about which tool that's been shared would best meet your needs? Remember, not every tool is gonna to be the perfect fit for every person. You can always try different tools until you find the one that you prefer. Let's recap. Screen recording provides a resource that can be used multiple times and with various classes, whether it's instructions or content. Students can review and replay as needed to increase their understanding. And students can also create videos to demonstrate their own knowledge. We thank you for joining us for this session. Please feel free to reach out to us if you need any additional information or support regarding this topic. And also visit our online website and our catalog to see other sessions that may be of interest and available to you.